Hello everyone, and welcome to After Alexander, episode 47, Royal Cousins. As the life and rule of Antiochus II is now firmly in the rearview mirror, I thought it might be worth taking a brief pause and focusing in on Laodike, his wife. We haven't really discussed the family she came from yet, although we have mentioned its founder before. All the way back in episode 9, I mentioned Achaeus the Elder, or I suppose it would be Achaeus the Elder if you're following the Greek pronunciations, the younger son of Seleucus I and the brother of Antiochus I. As his family are going to become more prominent in our narrative in the not too distant future, let's return to Achaeus. So, first things first, I haven't seen any reliable evidence for when Achaeus was born. As mentioned in episode 9, the only thing I've seen is on a website called jenny.com which lists 320 BCE as the year of his birth. Now, I should stress that this information does not mean that Achaeus was actually born then. This page only cites Achaeus' Wikipedia article as a source, which gives no birth date at all. All I can say is that he was born sometime after Antiochus I, whose birth we've previously listed as around the turn of 324-323 BCE. None of my sources have said when he died, either. Achaeus was rich and a landowner in Asia Minor. One thing you may have noticed, for reasons that we'll get into in a moment, is that I didn't just refer to him as Achaeus, but Achaeus the Elder, or Achaeus Senior, I suppose. Achaeus the Elder returns to our narrative at the time of the struggle against the Galatians, which we first discussed in episode 23. He supported those who helped in the fight against the Gauls, and ransomed supporters of himself and his brother Antiochus I who had been captured. The people who had been helped by him wrote it down on a stele and put it in Zeus and Apollo's sanctuaries in Babacome and Kidiokome. People descended from these individuals were given pride of place during festivities taking place there, and an annual sacrifice of an ox to Achaeus took place. That's a bit of background on the man himself. Next, his family. We don't know who Achaeus' wife was, although we do know that she was Greek. They had two sons and three daughters together. Now, Wikipedia lists these five children in a certain order, but I don't know if this translates to the first one being the eldest and the last being the youngest or not. The order given is Antiochus, Alexander, Laodike I, Andromachus, or Andromachos I suppose, and Laodike. Yes, you did hear that right, I'll get back to this in a second. For the record, I haven't come across birth dates for any of them in my sources, as is becoming a bit of a theme in this episode. Anyway, Achaeus' daughter Antiochus would become the wife of Attalus, and her son was King Attalus I of Pergamon. Conversely, Alexander was prominent under Antiochus I. We'll get on to Andromachus in a moment. Let's circle back now to a confusing point that I just mentioned. Yes, I did say the name Laodike twice. In keeping with the narrative's attempts to make my episodes as confusing as possible, there are two daughters called Laodike in the same family. Or at least, Polybius thinks so. The Wikipedia pages for both the Seleucid Empire and the Seleucid Dynasty show family trees in which this other Laodike is the daughter of Andromachus, so meaning the granddaughter of Achaeus the Elder and the niece of our Empress Laodike I. However, Edwin Bevan mentions that Laodike II, as we're going to call this younger sister, is the sister of Antiochus, so this would make her the daughter of Achaeus, not the granddaughter. So, it appears the jury is out a little bit. Laodike II could either be the aunt or the cousin of the man who would be her future husband, Seleucus II, based on the sources I've seen. Anyway, just to recap all of this, one of these women called Laodike is the Queen Laodike we've been discussing for the past 13 episodes or so, and the other is not. As I alluded to, fortunately for us, these two are known to history as Laodike I and Laodike II, so there is a handy way to distinguish between them. Incidentally, any suggestions for a collective noun for Laodikes, or indeed other Hellenistic names, are welcome at the show's email address. My first preliminary suggestion would be an exasperation or a confusion of Laodikes, but that's obviously biased due to my reaction to this nugget of information muddying the waters. However difficult it may be, let's now move away from the Laodike saga and towards their brother Andromachus. Andromachus had a son Achaeus the Younger, or Achaeus Junior, depending on how you want to say it, 
who will become relevant to the narrative in future episodes. Given all the confusion about names that has cropped up in this episode alone, you can probably see why suffixes such as the elder and younger or senior and junior are necessary. And as we've discussed, Andromarchus may also be the father of Laodike II, depending on which tree or version of events you believe. Now, this has been a more confusing episode than most, so just to recap everything quickly. Achaeus the Elder was the second son of Seleucus I and the younger brother of Antiochus I. Depending on who you believe, he either had four or five children. Going with the version where there are five children, their names are Antiochus, Alexander, Andromachus, and two women called Laodike. One of these women is the wife of Antiochus II, and the other will factor into our story later as the bride of Seleucus II. Finally, Achaeus the eldest son Andromachus had a son of his own, called Achaeus the Younger. Overall, the family were powerful in Asia Minor, and were tightly associated with the crown. They haven't factored into our main narrative other than through Laodike the First so far, but they're coming up in the story soon, so keep an eye out for them. Given this, and the prominent role Laodike has had and will continue to have, I thought it was worth revisiting Achaeus and his descendants in this breathing space between Antiochus II and his son Seleucus II. However, the tangent's over, so next time we'll pick up the narrative again in 246 BCE, and discuss the fallout from the death of Antiochus II. This will introduce us to a situation we haven't come across yet in the previous 77 years or so of our discussion. We've seen co-kings before, think Antiochus I and his son Seleucus the Young King, but for the first time we will see three people claim the title of king at once. Until then, thank you all for listening. For any questions or comments, feel free to get in touch with the show's email address. Until next time, have a great week everyone.